Hi everyone, welcome to Electronics with Professor Magal. September 21st was the last time I made a video on any kind of FEJ project. So I was literally craving to do some very long coding this week and I decided I'm going to make a project. And this video we're going to learn how to create a digital clock, something that we have done in the past in one of my videos. But this clock is going to be a little different than how we did the last time. And this is going to be intermediate to advanced level FPGA projects. So if you are a beginner, I recommend you watching some of my videos in my FPGA playlist. Another reason I would recommend you watching some of my videos from the past is because a lot of components that we are going to learn in this video have been covered in those videos. And as we move along, I'm going to leave the links on your screen where you can go and learn about those concepts. Therefore, I don't want to spend too much time over on it and I want to keep this video short and precise. I'm going to start off this video by doing a quick demo of this project and then we're going to move on to the block diagram. Block diagram is extremely important. If you can understand the block diagram, that's half battle one. Therefore, I'll encourage you to have a very good understanding of the block diagram in order to have a better understanding of the code. And finally, we're going to move on to the code. For the sake of time, I have already typed the code, created the source file and constraint file. However, I'm going to go through the code line by line and explain in as much of details as I can. So let's get rolling. So when you implement the code onto an FPGA board, by default, it's going to display 12 a.m. That's all. That's how I have set it up in the code. And I'll mention that when I cover this part, how you can change that. But I have gone through 12 a.m. by default. Also, if you notice, the a.m. p.m. indicator is right now currently off. And also, the clock is not in the clock mode. That means it's not going to take over to 12.01, 12.02. Uh, by the way, remember, the right two digits display the minutes and the two leftmost digits display, uh, display the hours. So it's a 12-hour format. And right now, it's not in a clock mode. That means the clock is not running. But when I press the center button, you will notice the LED, LED 1, will light on. That is the clock has started ticking and every 60 seconds the minutes is going to go up and once the minute reaches 59 that is when it's reset back to zero and then this is there's going to be an increment over here okay so that's that's how it's going to work on a clock mode and later on I'll show you uh, I'll have a fast run of how it's working in a clock mode let's say you want to set a new time you can also do that the way you're going to do that is you're going to deselect the clock mode. So you press the uh, center button and notice the clock mode is now off. You can switch between minutes and hours using this right and left push buttons. And you use the up and down push buttons to increment or decrement. Okay. By default, the minutes are going to change. So if I press one, uh, actually press this push button, notice here there was an increment by one. And if I keep on doing that, it'll keep on incrementing, okay? Until it gets to 59, and you see it's 29, 30, 44, 52, 53, 57, 58, 59, one o'clock. It's 1 a.m. in the morning. Uh, and if I need to switch to hours, I just need to uh, tap on any of these push buttons, okay? And now I can change the hours, okay? So say if you want to choose, you want to set 6 o'clock, you want to set 6 o'clock, or say 12 p.m. Notice here 12 a.m. p.m. lights turns on, that means it's p.m. And now I want to set this clock, all I need to do is press the center button, the, set, the clock mode is on now the clock is working okay if I want to switch it to say 1159 then I need to deselect the clock mode again here the clock is uh, clock mode is off now I'm gonna select uh, say this is 1159 right and I'm gonna do is so I'm gonna select this mode 
and right now it's in a clock mode it's 11 59 a.m. and after about a minute it will be 12 o'clock 12 p.m. and this LED one will be light up now you notice now after 60 seconds there was an increment in the minutes 0, 0, 59 again it will reset to 0, 0 and then there's an increment on the hour side so it's 12 now and the LED is on so that's 12 p.m. so that's how this clock is working Let's now look at the block diagram. Okay, so the way the block diagram is set it up is basically we're gonna have two modules. One would be the top module, which will be the for the 12 hour clock. The second module will be the seven segment module. And the inputs to this seven segment module are basically going to be the minutes and hours, okay? Minutes once, whatever is you know that number is is going to be displayed over here minutes once and minutes tens over here similarly hours ones will be displayed here and hours tens will be displayed here so say if this is zero this is five hours ones is two and this is one it's basically going to display one two five zero okay that's what this module is doing so therefore the output to this seven segment module is the seven segments of the each display and also the four enable to enable these four uh, display we'll be using a basis three board for this project and basis three board has four digit seven segment display okay all right, also we're gonna, so this is your display right here and I'm going to use a wire to connect these to this seven segment display of the basis three board, which I will name that wire as display digit where display digit zero is this digit right here. Display digit one is this right here, two right here, and then one right. In addition to that, we will also need a slow clock this will be a hundred hertz clock remember we will be toggling these seven segments on and off on and off on and off for 10 milliseconds and these three are off and this is on these three will be off i have done a separate tutorial on this i'll leave the link on the screen so i'm not gonna go in much of detail but we are setting up a slow clock in order to set a refresh rate for the seven segment display which is going to basically display the time the top module is basically we have the center button this is for selecting the clock mode okay clock mode the clock only works when it is set to a clock mode okay up is for the increment down button is for the decrement okay and the right and left push buttons these push buttons are for to toggle between hours and minutes okay again left button or right button they all are to toggle between hours and minutes so if you want to change if you are setting a time if you want to change hours by default it is set to minutes but if you press either right or left push button it will toggle between from minutes to hours and then when you press up and down it will increment and decrement these numbers right here okay on the hours 
So the main module will be basically how we set up our 12 hour clock. The outputs to that will of course be the seven segment display. And then we have two LEDs. LEDs will light up when it's PM and when it's working in a clock mode. If not, these LED will not light up. So here's a very good description of a 12 hour format digital clock. I kept it very simple. It's very important for you to understand this part of the block diagram and that makes the coding a lot more easier so like I mentioned earlier I have already typed the code and I'm gonna go through the code line by line and we're gonna start off by creating this seven segment module right here just quickly go over, going over it one more time we got four inputs minutes ones tens uh, and hours ones and tens and also two outputs segment seven segments for each of the display and also four bits for to enable each of the seven segment display on the basis three port. So let's get rolling. Here I have all my uh, port identifications. I need a clock. This is going to be a system clock which has a frequency of 100 megahertz on basis three board. board. I then have minutes ones minute tens hour ones and hour tens they all need to be four bits and so the bit size is four and the reason for that is on a given digit we can have a number from zero to nine and if you recall a binary representation of nine is actually one zero zero one so you basically need at least four bits on any of the digit display so that's why I have a bit size of four all the way if I wish I know on the hours and uh, hours tens the highest number that I can achieve is basically one correct so I really don't need four bit size array but I'm just gonna stick with what I have over here uh, as long as it's more than one that should be fine and also finally I have my segments seven segments and my four enablers both declared as registers then comes this part of the code where I'm doing port identification declaring wires and registers now remember digit display is going to be each of the four digits so this is digit 0 digit 1 digit 2 and digit 3 so 0 to 3 I just need two bits so that's why I have declared as, an, uh, as a two-bit array uh, digit display and initially I am setting it to a value of zero so whatever that comes in is going to be displayed over here line number 35 then I have uh, a, a, I'm declaring display as a register again this is the seven segments and the four enablers line number 37 this part of the code is for to generate the slow clock if you remember I told you in order for us to toggle these seven segment display on basis three board you're gonna have to cut down the frequency of the basis three board which is 100 megahertz to 100 hertz and therefore I would need to create a counter and I'm going with the size of 19 bits and I'm initially gonna set the counters uh, value to zero how I came up with this number 500,000 0.5 million is because 100 megahertz is the frequency of uh, the system clock right you want to cut it down to 100 Hertz because with 100 Hertz of frequency means 10 milliseconds this digit is going to be on and rest of the three will be off and then after 10 milliseconds this segment will be on the other three will be off and it happens fast enough that human eye cannot detect that I've already done a separate tutorial on it so I'll leave the link on your screen so 100 megahertz divided by the frequency that you want to set which is 100 hertz that gives you 1 million clock cycles and remember in a digital signal 1 million clock cycles would mean for half of the cycle is off half of the cycle is on so we need to multiply divided by 2 sorry and that equals 1 million divided by 2 that equals 500,000 so if the for 500,000 cycles 
if the signal is zero that means 10 milliseconds have occurred and finally line number 39 I am declaring 4-bit variable as a 4-bit wire which is going to carry the signals or the value for minutes ones tens hours ones and hours tens and I'm using a signing function to designate the value to each of this 4-bit uh, variable and feeding it with the value for minutes and hours okay so that's pretty simple and straightforward moving on to the next block this part of the code is basically responsible for setting up a hundred Hertz clock for enabling each segment which basically looking at a refresh rate of 10 milliseconds like I mentioned earlier so whenever the positive edge of the clock arrives we look for the counter value if the counter value is less than the maximum count value which is 500,000 then we would want the counter to go up to increment by one because 10 milliseconds have not yet occurred so keep on doing it until it gets to a maximum value and if that's the case then we would want the counter to reset to zero and also at the same time we would want the digit display to increment by one that means we got the number over here digit display zero initially we had it value to zero so whatever that number was was going to be displayed over here now it's after 10 milliseconds it's gonna get the number for minutes tens over here and similarly once it's done after 10 milliseconds it's gonna move on to hours ones and then hours ten so on notice here we have this begin however this begin has not ended yet Okay. this end belongs to this begin and this end belongs to this begin so within this same clock every time the positive edge of the clock arrives it also looks for uh, what is going to be displayed on each of these segments on the basis three board therefore we are going to use a case statement for four bit in the square brackets I have the digit display which is initially like I said is set to zero initially it's set to zero on line number sorry uh, on line number 34 right here okay so if you look at over here four bit initially is zero four bit zero is basically carrying an information or signal four bit zero is carrying information for minutes once minutes once and if those four bits are zero we all know that 40 corresponds to a decimal number 0 and therefore we want our segments to be 7 complement B 1 triple 0 triple 0 we remember this 0 is segment A this 0 is segment B C D E F G remember in order for us to display 0 on the basis three board all of the segment needs to be on except for this middle one which is segment A and because basis 3 board has an active low clock active low logic we would want to have the segment G value to be designated as 1 therefore it's off so this would display and similarly I got the logic for all the way from triple zero zero to double one double one you actually don't need this part of the code but because I had it from my previous videos I just left it in there because it's not going to have an impact upon my uh, the final display so if you want to you can leave that but if you want to keep it just leave it in there and then follow it by the end case now within the within this begin I also have another block where I am enabling each of the segment to display the digit remember these needs to be turned on one by one so therefore I know the variable for that is a n so digit display when I want to display the digit over here remember this is display initially it's uh, what is it it's set to zero right it's set to zero so we want to display the by uh, the minute ones over here therefore we would want to enable this digit by setting the logic to triple one zero which means the left the rightmost segment is going to be zero on 
and the other three segments are going to be off. Remember, one is off and zero is on. And also, on that particular display, we want the segment to display zero. Display zero. And we know what display zero. It will go over here and check for the 4-bit uh, data and then uh, display whatever number in decimal. Okay. Similarly, if the digit display is set to 1, if the display is set to 1, that would uh, uh, means that we would need to display minute tens over here, over here. So therefore, we need to have a logic 1, 1, 0, 1 for the enable. And therefore, we have 1, 1, 0, 1 for the enable. Segment gets a value of display 1. And similarly, we do the same thing for case 2 and case 3, where case 3 would mean this digit display will be on these three will be off so we're looking at a logic of zero triple one and therefore we have zero triple one over here segment gets the value of display three and we know display three is basically whatever we have hours tens that needs to be displayed over here remember we used a wire to display this all this information over here so this part of and here finally on line one zero one this is the n which is for the slow clock n, which began here, line number 49. So all this part right here is basically happening every 10 milliseconds. Every 10 milliseconds, it runs this code, it displays the number on the board, and then every 10 milliseconds, it keeps on refreshing it. And therefore, you see different numbers depending upon what the values over here are on the display on the basis report again it happens at a frequency at a refresh rate that human eye cannot detect by the way when i was making a video you might see that the digits were wobbling they were dancing they were actually not it's just the camera was uh, picking up those uh, you know those wobbling effect but if i really zoom in and get close to which i did later when i showed you the fast run of the clock the numbers were pretty solid and nice so that is this part of the code now we're going to move on to the top module let's look at the block diagram one more time before we start coding for the top module so if you look at the block diagram for the top module we basically have five inputs center button center button is to select the clock mode remember when the clock mode is on that is the time only when you can set a new time pardon me when the clock starts ticking over every second and when the center button is pressed this clock mode this LED turns on then you have up button down button this is for the increment or decrement the hours and minutes when you are trying to set a new time to upload onto the board and then you have right button and the left push button these two can be used alternatively to select between hours and minutes so say like I mentioned earlier by default when I start pushing up and down the counter over here increases and decreases okay but when I press right or left any of these two push buttons it will switch between minutes and hours and when I press up and down button now it changes the hour display on the basis report. Of course, we're going to have the clock here. It's going to be 100 megahertz system clock from the basis report. And then we're going to have to do some magic right here underneath the top module where we need to generate a slow clock of one second for the clock display. Of course, we need to have another slow clock for the push buttons that we have. We're going to uh, have a 4 hertz clock frequency for the push buttons and then remember because this is a 12 hour format digital clock therefore we have am pm led so if it's morning time am night time pm and therefore the led would reflect whether it's am or pm so keeping in mind these six inputs on the left and these four outputs on the right segments enable am pm indicator and the clock mode Let's start 
the coding for the top module. And like I said, I also have the uh, code already typed for the top module. The first few lines right here, from line number 23 to line number 34, that's your port identification, putting your inputs and outputs out there. Again, clock is a system clock. You'll find comments underneath uh, next to each line. So that's a system clock right here. Center button for the clock mode that is selecting and deselecting the clock mode. That's what this push button is used for. Right and left, again, switch toggle between minutes and hours to set a new time. Up and down buttons for incrementing or decrementing hours or minutes. Seven segment display, four enablers, the two output LEDs that reflects AM, PM, and the clock mode. So quickly going over this part of the code, line 36 to 38, uh, actually line 37 and 38, these two lines are responsible for generating a one second resolution clock. So the, uh, remember basis three board has a frequency of 100 megahertz. So that's what the maximum count we are looking for. For that to accommodate, we need 32 bits. Initially setting the value of the counter to zero, and remember, this part of the code is basically responsible for creating a clock, uh, a one frequency, one second um, counter that would be basically taking over our clock, our main clock. Moving on to this section of the code, line 41 to 43, of course, we need to store the values for hours, minutes, and seconds. Initially, I am setting those value to zero. Therefore, I'm declaring them as register. On a, minim, uh, on a minute, obviously, we can have 0 to 59 minutes and similarly seconds, 0 to 59 seconds. And therefore, I need a 6-bit register. Uh, the reason I have 6-bit is because 6-bit would allow me to have a range of 0 to 63. I only need to count up to 59, so 6-bit would work. For hours, I only need 24 hours. There are only 24 hours in a day. 6-bit would still work, so I didn't change that. Uh, 42, line number 42, if you look at this right here, this is what we are displaying on the clock, on the four seven-segment display on the basis three board. Minutes one, minutes ten. This will be displayed on the two rightmost segments, and the two leftmost segments will display the hours. Again, initially value set to zero, declared as register. Line number 43, I got this toggle. This button, not a button, but this is basically going to toggle between minutes and hours to change. So if it's set to zero, like I said, by, by default, it is set to zero. When you start uh, pushing button up and down, the minutes increase. When toggle is set to one, which happens when either when you press a right push button or a left push button this toggle changes its logic to one and that's when when you start uh, pressing push button up and down the hours increment or decrement this part of the code is fairly simple am pm indicator light i'm basically creating a variable which i declare as a register initially its value is set to zero and this pm gets stored and the AM PM indicator LED, which I have already declared as an output above. So PM because it's zero and by default, the AM PM light is going to be zero because we are going to display 12 AM. When you, when I implement the code onto the board, that's what you will see on the display, 12 AM. Therefore the AM PM indicator LED will be zero. And then clock mode, again, by default, I'm setting the value to zero and then this value gets stored in the variable clock mode indicator LED, which again I declared as an output above. Line number 52, instantiating the module that we just created right here. And I am basically just following the sequence over here. So you have to follow the sequence, clock, minutes, ones, minute tens, hours, ten segments, and enable. So if you look at over here, I am trying to follow the same sequence seven segment module this name needs to be exact match like I have over here and then followed by an identifier this could be anything I have just gone with SSM and then following the sequence clock 
followed by minutes, followed by hours, followed by seven segments, followed by the four enablers. Let's moving, move on to the next section of the clock. This part of the clock is I'm basically making two constants. So one constant is going to be display time, which I am designating a value of zero. And the other one is set time, which equals one. And I'm basically storing this value to current mode, which is again declared as a register. So by default, it's one. Now what this is doing when the display time or when the current mode, I should rather say current mode, when the current mode is zero, that means it allows to set the time. It allows you to set the new time that can be feed it into the clock. However, when the current mode is set to one, if this is set to one, that is whatever the new time you set the user set it gets loaded onto the clock okay so let's move on what's happening in this part of the code over here let's focus on this part first again this is a positive edge of the clock so it looks for the positive edge of the system clock okay uh, case we have a case statement over here case keyword current mode remember current mode is set to one okay when it's set to one by default it's going to display 12 a.m to 11 59 p.m that's how it is sequenced display time is zero remember display time is zero so if the current mode is zero what happens and if during this time if the center button is pressed if the center button is pressed then the new time it adjusted uh, and then all the counters are reset so clock mode basically goes to zero by default it was one right and then one would mean that it needs to set the new time uh, load the new time that was set by the user clock mode goes to zero current mode would display whatever the new time was set by the user and after that has been done all the counters including the counter the toggle and seconds the second the takes clock taking over every second those need to be countered because after you sent us uh, uh, set the new time new time into the clock the counter goes start back again so number of seconds every second start taking over from zero okay in the same body I have this part of the code which is again pretty simple this is every one second we need the clock right to arrive so if the counter has not reached its maximum value again this was hundred million then counter should go up by one if the counter has reached its maximum value then the counter should reset itself to zero and it also means one second time has occurred so seconds is incremented by one so it goes start zero one two three every seconds and go on once it reaches 59 seconds then it uh, reset back to zero and then the minutes goes up all right let's see what's going on uh, this part of the code so if the current mode if the current mode is one now if current mode is one set time was set to one what happens then well again it need to it needs to load the new set time so therefore when center button is pressed when the center button is pressed the clock mode gets to one that means you have changed the time and now clock mode going to one clock will start taking over taking the time that has been loaded onto the board and it will display the current display time the current mode will display uh, will get the display time we also here have a code to eliminate the bouncing effect the debouncing effect that we need to take care of for the push button and therefore we are going for a setting up a clock speed to four hertz for all the push buttons remember we got five of those and we are going for a counter value 
a maximum count value of 25 million and again this is something i've done in my previous videos i'll leave the link on the screen so to have this uh, debounce effect uh, we need to have a debounce module which is basically this right right here so if the counter if the counter has not reached this value the counter should go up by one if the counter has reached the value of 25 million then it should reset itself to zero and then underneath that we, this is a very important uh, part of the code right here case toggle again remember toggle was something that switches between hours and minutes correct so if the toggle is zero by default it's zero that means minutes will change these two display reflect minutes this will change so if the up button is pressed if the up button is pressed that means minutes will go up by one if the down button is pressed then the minutes will go down by one now there are two more scenarios that could happen please uh, have have your full attention over here because this is important if the down button is pressed and if the hours is greater than one so say the hour the time is two zero zero it's two o'clock okay hours is greater than two and if the down button is pressed then the two minus one hours minus one so one down it should display 159 correct one minute down from here will be 159 so one would come how hours gets hours minus one and minutes will get 59 okay i hope you're getting this another situation could be if the down button is pressed and the hours equals to one say the time is one o'clock one o'clock and if the down button is pressed, we know it should reflect 1259. So it should, hours should get 12 and minutes should get 59 followed by end to complete this block right here. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the next part. Again, this is very interesting. Now, if left or in with right, either the left button is pressed or the right button is pressed any of the input among these two is high it toggles to hours so by default it was taking care of the minutes when i press left button or right button it switches to hours now this time if the up button is pressed hours goes up by one just like minutes were going up previously and if the down button is pressed there are two possible scenarios one of them if the hours is greater than one if hours is greater than one and the down button is pressed then hours should go down by one however if hours equals to one again i'll give you the same example if the time is one o'clock okay hours is one and if the down button is pressed it should go to 12 hours go to 12 and similarly again if the right or left button any of the input uh, is high then it toggles back to zero so let me go back here if I go back to here and then any of this button right or left is pressed it again toggles switches to hour switches to minutes from hours okay and it will keep on doing that uh, here's the end case and the end for the set clock and for the current mode end case now let's focus on this part of the clock this is the basically conventional digital clock it looks for the counter when the seconds is greater or equal to 60 that means second needs to reset it sets to zero minutes goes up by one when minutes gets to 60 that is when minutes should reset to zero and hours should go up by one and if hours are greater or equal to 24 then hours need to reset because in one day we have 24 hours so that part of the code is basically your digital clock let's move on this part of the code this is again very a uh, little tricky so i want you to focus over here this part of the code is basically responsible for throwing digits over the seven segment display hours gets here minutes gets over here 
and also if this part that part of the code is also resp responsible for lighting up this LED when it's PM when it's AM by default it's going to be off okay so let's see what's going on over here now imagine um, minutes once minutes once time is say 1250 1250 is the time right now so minutes once is zero and minutes minutes tens is going to be five uh, correct here that's what it needs to be displayed on the seventh segment but if we take minutes one basically what we're doing dividing the minutes by 10 so if I take the minutes which is 50 and then if I divide 50 by 10 I basically get what is the remainder the remainder is basically 5 it's basically 0 right there's no remainder 50 divided by 10 gives me 5 the remainder is 0 so I get 0 here I get 0 displayed over here at the clock let's see if the minutes tens minutes tens is this this should reflect 5 right how do I get 5 here again when I take the minutes and I take divide the minutes by 10 this is what it means uh, I want to focus I want you to focus over here this percentage sign or division sign is basically gonna take the remainder is and it's gonna store that remainder into minutes one and because 50 divided by 10 does not give us any kind of remainder the remainder was zero so you get zero right but when you divide 50 divided by 10 uh, again there's a difference between this and this right here 50 divided by 10 gives you 5 so minutes tens will get 5 so therefore it will display 50 on the right to rightmost seven segment display I hope you understand that part now let's focus over here what if hours is less than 12 if hours is less than 12 there are multiple scenarios that could happen if hours is less than 12 that means the AM PM indicator light needs to be zero it needs to be zero however we still need to reflect the number in the seven on the seven segment display over here that number of hours so if hours equals to zero uh, so if hours less than 12 and if it's zero then it should basically uh, fall back to 12 right so hours tens should display one and hours hours one should display two and hours tens should display one therefore we get we are assigning the values of two and one to these two variables and how would I how would we go about it again you know uh, taking the remainder dividing it by 10 and then storing it into hour one just like we did for minutes and taking the number of hours whatever this number is less than 12 dividing it by 10 so say if this number is 7 if this number is 7 hours so 7 divided by 10 the, what is going to be the remainder remainder is going to be 7 so it will display 7 or hours once so 7 will be displayed here and 0 will be displayed over here correct okay else if hours equals to 12 then it needs to display 12 so that's where we would designate 2 2 hours once and 1 2 hours tens remember these have been declared as register earlier and if the hours is not equal to 12 so we will do the same thing like we did earlier taking the coefficient and then dividing it and coming up with whatever, whatever the number is storing it in hours tens and if the hours equals to 12 that is when the p.m. time has started so p.m. gets stored a value of 1 and LED will be on so this is your top module it's got a lot of components in there that I have covered individually in many of my videos now I am going to synthesize this code right here and do the implementation so it took me almost three minutes 
in a few seconds to complete the implementation, but I'm glad it's done. Fail timing, there is a warning right here, but I'm just gonna skip that because it's not relevant or it's not important to what I wanna show you at this point. I have already connected my board to my laptop. I'm now going to generate a bit stream and following that, I am going to connect my board with my PC by going to open hardware manager and then implement the code onto the board by uploading the bit file. Bitstream has been created. Next step is open the hardware manager, click open target, click auto connect, make sure your board is connected, power it on. Next step would be to click on program device and then choose your target it should automatically have your bit file here click program and you should be ready to see the implementation of your code onto the board so by default if i press increment then it should basically increment minutes as you saw the display went up by one it's now 1201 so if I keep on pressing the up button, that's for the increment. If I keep pressing the down button, that's the decrement. I can always toggle between minutes and hours by either pressing this, these two buttons. So if I press this, it should allow me to change the hours, right? And as, as I would go past 12, now the AM PM indicator light is on, that's 12 PM. And if I just keep on incrementing, that's 11 p.m., that's 12 a.m. now, that's 1 a.m., and now the LED has gone. So if I want to set a time, let's say 2 o'clock and uh, let's say 2.05, 2.05, and that's what the time is, and I want to set this time, the way I can upload this time is by pressing the center button, and that's when the clock mode clock mode LED indicator uh, clock mode indicator LED is on so it's 205 and since the LED 0 which is the AM PM indicator right here is off it's 205 AM in the morning and that's how this clock is working I hope you enjoyed watching the video and you'll find it useful you can have an access to the project files using the link in the description and I'll be more than happy to assist you. However, I do have three requests for all of my followers all over my social media platforms including Facebook, YouTube and Instagram. And also not to forget Patreons.com. My first request to you guys is to subscribe to my YouTube channel. My motivation level is directly proportional to number of subscribers. The more support I get more motivated I get to produce this quality content. So please do that and spread the word with your friends and colleagues. My second request to you is consider becoming a patron if you can. And it comes with a lot of perks including private chat with Professor Mughal in addition to one-on-one -on -one session or Zoom. And my third request for all of you is to visit my website www.electronicswithprofessormughal.com and might consider subscribing or signing up to a newsletter and be the first one to be notified what is happening at Electronics with Professor Mughal. Thank you for watching the video again. I wish you good luck, stay safe. Till next time, bye-bye.